Hello, and welcome to a Digital Media Academy how-to, an introduction into wireless robotics using Bluetooth. My name is Sam Jaffe, and I am one of the lead instructors here at Digital Media Academy. In this wireless robotics how-to, we'll be talking about the Arduino and how to get it to read and interpret Bluetooth data. What you'll need to complete this project is an RN42XV Bluetooth module, a regulated breakout board for the Bluetooth module, a Macintosh computer with Bluetooth, an Arduino board, a breadboard, some wire, and whatever other electronic components you'd like to put on your robot, like motors, servos, or lights. Let's get started. To start, let's talk about what an Arduino is. Arduino is an open source microcontroller. This is just like the processor of your phone or iPod or singing greeting card. The difference between an Arduino and other microcontrollers is that Arduino boards can be programmed to perform tasks to suit your needs. Instead of a speaker, microphone, and screen for a cell phone, you can interface with distance sensors, LEDs, motors, and other electronic components. This makes Arduino ideal for prototyping electronic systems as well as robotics. So if we're making robots, we're going to want them to be wireless. And as we previously discussed, we're going to use Bluetooth for that wireless capability. If you're not familiar with Arduino and haven't used it before, go to arduino.cc and download the application. Once downloaded, open it up. First, let's talk a little bit about Arduino and how to program it. The Arduino application will give you a blank sketch. This is where you'll be writing your code to take in the inputs, interpret the data, and send out the outputs. To start, Every Arduino sketch has a setup function and a loop function. The setup function will be run once when the Arduino is powered on. The loop function will loop continuously. This is useful for robotics because you want your robot to keep going until you turn it off. There's a lot you can do with Arduino. The Arduino website has an entire reference page with all of the functions you can use. Check out this page and check out the examples to see some other projects and how to do them. But the thing we're focusing on right now is how to read the Bluetooth data. We're going to read the Bluetooth data with Serial. Serial is a common data transfer protocol and is used in most electronics. What we need to do is start the Serial port. We do this by typing serial.begin. Then we put in the baud rate. The baud rate is basically how many characters per second you're sending. The Bluetooth module is set by default to be 115,200. So that's what we're going to set our Arduino to. Next, we're going to use the available function. When the Arduino receives Serial data, it gets stored in a buffer. Serial.available just returns how many characters are in that buffer. So, if serial.available is greater than zero, or if there is data to be read, read the data. The serial.read function reads the first character in the buffer, bumps it off, and slides everything down. For example, if we send the Arduino the data 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, our serial.available will return 5, because that's how many characters are in the buffer. If we run the serial.read function, it will return 1, bump it off of the serial buffer, and then slide everything down. Now serial.available will return 4, and the next serial read will return a 2, then bump it off. Since this is in a loop, it'll continue doing this until there's nothing left in the buffer. This is great, but it doesn't do us much good. We need to store this data somehow. So what we're going to do is declare a character and store the serial.read value into that character. We've created a character called data, so anytime we get to this portion of the code, serial.read is going to store its value into data. Now we can use conditional statements to do things based on data's value. So here's a little bit of sample code. This is going to check if the data sent in is a W, a Q, or an A, and it's going to print something out based on that. Now all you need to do is upload it to your board, and then use the serial monitor to send data. Important note, on our breadboard, we plugged wires into the Arduino's 5V ground and RX pins. The RX is used for serial communication, and it messes with the upload process. It has to be unplugged while you're uploading sketches to the board. So, plug in your Arduino, go into Tools, select the correct board, go to Serial Port, select USB, and Upload. You should see lights flashing. Now go into the serial monitor, type W, press enter, press Q, press A, and enter. If you press anything else, it won't do anything because we didn't tell it to. 
Now imagine instead of sending data like this, we're sending data to the Bluetooth module. The Bluetooth module is sending the data, and then the Arduino is picking it up. So here's our setup right now. All you have is your computer on the top left, the USB cable, which is the three wires, and the Arduino. In the sketch we just did, the Arduino is set to read what's on the blue RX pin. The Arduino reads that data and does something based on the data that's being sent. Now instead of reading data from the computer, we're going to set up the Arduino to read the data from the Bluetooth module. Now the Bluetooth module will be sending the data. Now all we have to do is find a way to send data to the Bluetooth module. In the next video, we'll be talking about an application called Processing. Processing will allow us to create images, interfaces, retrieve data from keystrokes and mouse movements, and most importantly, send data via the serial port we created in the first video to the Bluetooth module, which will then be relayed to the Arduino board to control our robot. Move on to the next video to see how to use Processing to communicate with your robot via Bluetooth.